Hi, um, today I'm doing a review on a young adult series called um, Strange Angels by Lily, Lily St. Crow. This author is kind of annoying in how she spells her names all different ways, like with another series she's, she's Lilith St. Crow and sometimes the saint is spelled S-T full stop and other times it's spelled S-A-I-N-T. So if you're typing in that name just be aware that there's different ways Lily St. Crow spells her name. But anyway, um, Strange Angels, there are um, four books so far, and the fourth one was just released like um, last week or this week. Um, I think it's called Defiance, or Defiant, Defiance. Um, anyway, um, there's going to be a fifth book, and then that's going to be the last one. Um, so there's four so far, and it's about, obviously it's kind of a, a supernaturally series. Um, it's about Drew, she's a teenage girl. And um, the initial premise of the book, which I'm not spoiling because it's in the back, if you read the back of the book, um, that, this is what it's described as. But this is the initial thing that really kind of dragged me in and made me think, oh, this series sounds really good. Um, Drew is raised by her father, who's a kind of a hunter, like a, a supernatural um, creature hunter. Like He hunts like vampires and demons and all these different types of creatures. And she's grown up with this, so she's kind of his little sidekick. And um, she's about 16, I think, in the books. And um, that part, anyway, reminded me of, you know, the TV show Supernatural, which I love. So I thought this was kind of interesting. And then um, it turns really, like, tragic and compelling in that um, her dad becomes a zombie and tries to kill her, basically. And she has to kill her own father. And how, like... I mean, how tragic is that for poor Drew? She has to kill her own father before he kills her. So, I mean, that's going to be, um, that's going to create a lot of issues for her. But anyway, so Drew um, is alone, really, and she ends up making this new friend called Graves, and he gets kind of dragged into her world. And these two young people, you know, they have to become really resilient and resourceful, and the whole first book is then, um, you just see them, kind of as their relationship grows and what they have to deal with and they both have kind of issues to deal with so um their relationship is really good to read about and the whole story is exciting in itself um and the second book it changes a lot because it's a completely different setting and the third and the fourth kind of continues on that way um so as i said the initial plot and premise of the story was really really good but then it changes a bit like um the first book, I think, is completely different to the um, second, third, and fourth. But um, I, the first two are definitely the best. When I first read the first two, I was like, oh my god, I love this series. These books are brilliant. The, st the story and the characters. And um, that was great. The third and the fourth, I'm not in love with. Like, they're good, but they're not great. Not as great as the first two. Um, mostly because it's kind of the same thing dragging on. Um, and Drew, the main character, gets kind of a bit more whiny as the books go on to. She kind of has the same arguments over and over. And um, they're kind of really easy to read. You know, I, I know another series that Lily St. Crow writes, and it's very hard to read, but this series is definitely easy to read. And the characters are kind of nice to relate to, and um, it's just a nice kind of YA series. And I really recommend it. Um, I think you'd enjoy it. Um, is there anything else to say about it that won't spoil it? I do think as well that the um, supernatural element of the series kind of comes second to the whole characters and the emotional drama um, that is there. Um, as well, on the supernatural aspects, there are vampires and there are werewolves, but um, they're kind of treated a bit differently in this world. Like Different terminology are used. Like there's, um, With the werewolves, there's Luke Guru and there's Wolven and Wolven is spelled with U, W-U, which is kind of weird. And the um, vampires in it have completely different terminology as well, and the male and female vampires are treated completely differently. And um, there's other kind of creatures, like as I said, zombies. And um, But yeah, so it's, it's an interesting world, and um, I just I think they're good. And just be prepared to know that the third and fourth, well, I found, weren't as good as the first two, but I do think you should um, read them anyway and um yeah so check them out look them up um 
Okay, so I want to do a kind of a more spoiler detailed review now. So if you haven't read the series before and you don't want to know any details or spoilers, um, I suggest you switch off now. Um, I love Graves. I think he's great. Um, I loved his relationship with Drew and how you got to see it develop. And you got to see him develop as a character too. I loved him in the second book, how he was much more kind of stronger and you know he stood up for himself and he was like really protective of Drew, which was sweet. Which is um, a big contrast to how Christoph is protective of her. Christoph, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm not sure what to think of him really. He's just so, he's kind of overbearing. He's kind of a token, broody, intense guy that has to be there in every kind of YA series. Um, He's just a bit too overprotective, I think, of Drew, and he like treats her as if she's like a ch like a really fragile china doll or something. And I know in this world she is kind of precious and everything, but he's a bit too much, and I can't see him as a love interest when he treats her kind of like his um his job or property or whatever. Um, and I always, always kind of go for the other guy in love triangles. So the love triangle between Graves, Christoph, and Drew minor love triangle really. Um, I always want to go for the other guy and friend so I wanted her to get with Graves a lot but it was kind of obvious every time Christoph came on the scene her heart would like jump and it was kind of obvious she was going to get with Christoph and I think she kind of got with him. It was very kind of implicit that way um, but her and Graves I mean they kind of gave it a go. I kind of wish they were less coy and fearful of their feelings and just kind of admitted things. Um, so they needed to kind of get their act together a little bit, kind of in the second and third book. I liked Shanks as the books went on to kind of Gray's friends and his friendship and the other wills with them, um, with Drew. And as I said, books three and four, the story just kind of continued. Like, oh, um, Drew is a Svet Svetaka and she's precious so we must take care of her and then this bad guy sort of or gay or whatever his name is was after her and um yeah so the third and fourth book is just like again she's at another school when she's locked up and whatever um i was really shocked at the beginning of the fourth book i thought they'd go straight looking for graves because i was so devastated he was kidnapped and he was going to be broken or whatever but like they continued on with their kind of own missions and i was like oh my god where's graves why aren't they going looking for him he came in way too late in the fourth book. That kind of made it a less great as well for me. But the minute he came into the book, I was enjoying it a lot more. I missed him so much from the fourth one. I didn't realize, you know, how much I would, but I did. And um, immediately, him and Drew were great together. Um, so yeah, and now in the next book, in the fifth one, um, Drew, Ash, who, has, who is now human, and Graves, um, they're kind of on the run. So. Christoph isn't in the picture at the moment, so that's good. Um, he's going to find him, obviously. Uh, so, I know, the next book is going to be interesting. I think it's going to be better than the last couple because it's changing it up a bit. It's not just still at the school and Drew's still locked up or whatever. So, I do think the next book is going to be better. And it's the last book, so it has to be the best, really. Um, just a note on the um, whole Svetaka thing with Drew. I kind of like the fact that, you know, she's so precious in this world like there's males everywhere and she's like practically the only female um vampire or whatever and all the evil vampires are the nosferat or whatever they're called um you know are after her because her blood is so precious to them and then um when she blooms or becomes a fully fledged vampire her blood will be like toxic to them so that's kind of different and like that i haven't really read that before so that that was unique so yeah, I think, as I said, the writing is is grand, you know, easy to read. I do think sometimes the author does kind of cringe where the descriptions of Drew and like, it, which isn't needed. I don't know why she does it. Um, so as I said, I like the series. Definitely the two, fr the first two books are great. I really love them. And um, I like Graves and Drew's relationship and the easy, the kind of easy to read writing. So. They are recommended and um, check them out. And if you've already read them, and let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and if you're going to, uh, if you're going to make a, um, a specific comment, 
just write spoiler warning before it so people won't um, continue reading. But um, thanks anyway for watching my review today and um, tune in to my next one.